Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bhartia, and welcome to TFLS Talk and Trade. We have with us Jackie Maguire, Senior Security Strategist at Gribble. Jackie, it's great to have you on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Great to be here. It's my pleasure to host you here today. And today, there is a lot to talk about, of course, Copilot's launch earlier and then recent funding round of 319 million Series A. Let's just start with basics, which is how would you define Gribble in this modern world? <laughs> Uh, so Kribble is the data engine for IT and security. Uh, I, I call this different things to different people because we solve a handful of different problems across the enterprise. You know, if you're security, you might look at us as more of a telemetry pipeline. If you're in the observability space, you probably look at us more of an observability pipeline. But we've really built out a suite of products that are intended to help people get data from where it's at to where it needs to go in the format it needs to be to get there and only that format with only that data. So it's <laughs> it's a lot of things to a lot of people. No, and, and that actually does make a lot of sense because sometimes when I do talk to folks in the observability space and then I talk to folks in the security space, I was like, hey, there are a lot of overlap, there are the gaps. So let's just forget about the labels and jar jargons and all the cultural movement that we talk about. Let's just talk about the problem that we are trying to solve. We are tapping into the same data. So thanks for uh, talking about that. Now, when it comes to Cribble and the space that you focus folks are working in. What is the scope of AI and if we can also talk about Gen AI in this space and how you folks are not only leveraging but bringing it to production so that even your users or your, your customers can leverage those technologies? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Cribble recently released a capability called Copilot. Um, and Copilot really is intended to help uh, make some of the repetitive and kind of low risk things that analysts and security analysts and IT professionals have to do every day a little bit less uh, painful. So things like building queries, turning natural language into query, um, writing regex expressions, which geez, we hate to do that, um, reading our documentation. So everything from, you know, like essentially all the stuff that takes time to do that's not the best use of your time. And so I think when we think about where AI is and where generative AI is especially, um, it's really not at a place where I think we can trust it to do a lot of high risk um, things because it still needs a lot of supervision. Uh, but in terms of uh, things that are take up a lot of time, I think the last statistic I saw was the average um, IT and security professional needs to know seven query languages to do their job. So if we can help speed that up a little bit and you can just say, hey, find the logs at this time frame from this user in this place and we can turn that into a, a query that'll work. That's that's really a great way to to use AI for us. And there's a lot of uh, other ways that people are using it, but I think that's what we're really focused on, given the sensitivity of the data that we deal with. Can you also talk about when we look at things like Copilot? Uh, there are a lot of uh, other players also in the market, uh, and of course. Uh, depending on, the, like, even Salesforce, you know, he was making fun of Microsoft Copilot. Hey, it's just like glorified Clippy. How does Cribble, once again, uh, realistically differentiate itself? So, because you folks are targeting, you know, enterprise customers, which is different than the mass market. So, talk about how do you differentiate what value it actually brings to the teams? Yeah, so again, Cribble Copilot is a, a feature. It's not really a product, right? So this isn't something that we're going out to the market and selling as its own standalone thing. This is really just intended to save time and uh, resources to do the more mundane things that a lot of us hate doing, like crawling through documentation and writing queries and you know doing a lot of the other things that uh, can be challenging. So you can tell it, for example, like, help me build a pipeline to get data from here to here, and we'll kind of help you start to automate some of that. So um, there are competitors out there. And if customers have found, you know, another AI product that will help them crawl our documents and, and do those things better than ours, they're absolutely welcome to use that. So Cribble as a company is in hopefully, uh, finger, will remain to be, uh, a vendor agnostic platform, right? So we want to work with everybody because we're really here to help people get their jobs done better, more efficiently, and contribute to better IT and security outcomes. So um, I don't want to I don't want to confuse that Copilot is something that we're actually trying to sell as much as it is another way that we're trying to really supercharge what our customers are able to do with uh, their their technology in a given day. Excellent. And that also leads to the second question is that more or less like uh, how much teams have to change or adapt to 
you know, your co-pilot versus it fits so nicely in their workflow that they won't even notice yeah. it. Yeah, and that's exactly it, is if you're on Cribble Cloud and you're already in there building pipelines and you can just click a little icon at the bottom and ask it a quick question, that's a lot less disruptive than, for example, switching screens, pulling up a PDF, something like that. And so uh, I happen to be the co-chair of our neurodiversity employee resource group. So I am very autistic, very ADHD, really good at what I do, can get more done in a good day than most people can in three weeks. But if I'm switching windows, it's almost guaranteed... <laughs> Something so, uh, like squirrel, right? Something's going to catch my attention. Something's going to distract me. So that's where this is really intended to, you know, keep you on one page doing what you're doing and automate, again, low risk, high repetitive uh, things that, that really aren't what you get paid to do. Anything else from the co-pilot's perspective before we move to the funding round uh, that you want to talk about? No, you know, I think if you look at the fact that at least in cybersecurity, the federal government just called out, we need at least half a million more cybersecurity professionals. Um, what we're really trying to do with things like Copilot and actually Cribble's product suite in general is lower the barriers to entry. So we don't want people to have to know six or seven query languages to do their job. We don't want them to have to know how to navigate a SIM and maybe a SOAR platform and an XDR platform and five different databases. We really want them to be able to spend their time doing the things that are really where the ROI for that team comes from, which is uh, detecting, preventing breaches, you know, detecting and preventing outages on the IT side. Um, and these are things that we really feel like by enabling lower skilled individuals to do these things, you know, we're going to help start bridging that gap. And that's a very excellent point, because sometimes when we look at AI or Gen AI in that case, that is going to replace folks. I mean, yes, I mean, every technology comes, it does, but I feel that it just like, you know, Photoshop's, it did not eliminate the job of photographers or graphic. It actually enabled even the people who did not master the skill, but even they can create better. So it's a, it's a good tool in the hands. But sometimes we, when we get a hammer, everything starts looking like a nail. So that should also be not the case. But it enables teams and also it enables developers to save a lot of time on doing mundane tasks and so that they can focus on, because a lot of things are moving developers pipeline. So the more you make it easier for them, the better it is. Now, I want to talk about uh, the, the funding round as well. Talk a bit about uh, the funding round and where do you see it's going to be invested? We announced that we had uh, raised on, I guess, back in, what was it, August August 27th? Uh, Cribble announced that we raised a $319 million uh, Series E at about a $3.5 billion valuation, which is up about 40% um, from our Series D rounding, which was in uh, 2022. Um, so the round was actually led by a new investor for us, um, Google Ventures, which is really exciting. Um, and Michael McBride, uh, who was former GitLab CRO, uh, has joined our board as part of Google Ventures. So it's something that we're really, really excited about. Um, and I think having uh, such a fantastic uh, investor and, and partner is going to be really great for the business. I think for personally, I so I came from finance, right? So I spent some time at Silicon Valley Bank and before that Fidelity. Um, so and then as an industry analyst covering um, SIM, SOAR, and XDR. So when I look at it from an outside perspective, um, I think this is really further evidence that we are solving really real, really um, underserved populations within IT and security teams. Um, the problem that we solve is not necessarily sexy uh, or, or something that people generally think about. And I think that's kind of the whole point is it's a bit of green field because to invest in things like data integration and routing and parsing and things like that. It's just, it's something that's always been done in house and has always been done very manually because unless you really can achieve vendor agnosticism and work with everybody, I don't think there's a way to build a profitable business. Um, I think a lot of people may have been skeptical, uh, you know, when Cripple first said, hey, we're gonna be vendor agnostic. We're not gonna pick one cloud provider or one SaaS provider, one SIM provider to work with. We're going to try to work with everybody. Um, and this rec most recent round, I think the last round to me really proved it as well. But this is just further proof that you can work with everybody. And that, you know, I, I always say if you, you know, the art of war, right, you need to think like your enemy. And so if we think about attackers, they're not <laughs> they're not working with intellectual property. They're open sourcing everything. They're sharing secrets. They're sharing tools. They're working together. Um, and I think really if we're going to uh, 
meet this challenge of protecting our data going into the future, we need to start doing that. You know, we cannot work in these kind of IP proprietary language and format and schema silos anymore. Um, and for me, this recent round was kind of a proof that that people are really believing that that this is the way that technology is going. Of course, it's, it's October now. Talk a bit about what are the things in the pipeline, what more we should expect and what kind of things we should look for in 2025. Yeah, so one of the things that I started to identify several months ago is that, you know, we've developed this really robust suite of products. And one of the things that we had started hearing from customers is like, there's so much that we can do now. How do we figure out what to do first? And so I think one of our next phases as a company is that we really need to become a partner with our customers um, to an even greater extent and an advisor. And we need to start helping them, helping partner, you know, our customers figure out how to prioritize projects, what the best first step to take is. So I've personally been working on a whole suite of data modernization content um, and data maturity uh, scales to kind of help you figure out where am I at? Where do I need to go? Because um, we hear a lot. We hear about uh, decision paralysis and choice paralysis, where I'd rather make no decision than make the wrong decision. So we're kind of helping, trying to help customers make better decisions and uh, teach our end users how to talk to their CISOs about these things and align their priorities with the, the higher level executive and company priorities. Um, so I'm really excited about that because I think um, it's an overlooked part of IT and security that the people who use our products aren't always great at articulating the overall executive strategy and kind of future strategy of data that you know they're they're using these products for so uh i'm i'm as a thought leader <laughs> i'm really excited about this because i think it's our chance to help turn our customers into thought leaders within their organization as well jackie once again thank you so much for joining me today not only talk about you know the co-pilot but also the investment and also share a lot of insights where the world is heading thanks so much for those insights and i would love to have you back on the show thank yeah, you yeah we'd love to be here thanks for having me